last minute calls. The time is 6 p.m. and the regular meeting of the Denison City Council is now in session. This evening, our invocation will be given by Jeff Humphreys, Humphrey, pastor of Parkside Baptist Church. I should know how to pronounce his name. Oh, you're so good. He's a dear love, you. love you, Mayor. Let's pray together. So, Lord, thank you so much for tonight, and I thank you for these men and women that are standing in front of me right now, people that have, have offered themselves to you and to our city, Lord, to help us to be the great place that we know that we can be and that you've blessed us to be. Lord, I pray tonight uh, two things. First of all, that you would give them wisdom, Lord, help them to understand, Lord, uh, everything that is and everything that is to come and be able to put us into a place where we can make the most of these great blessings we have being in this great city that you've given us, Lord. Give them your wisdom, Lord, and help them to make wise decisions for us, Lord. But Lord, uh, tonight you put it on my heart also to pray for them and their families, Lord, because each one of these people represent uh, families that are standing behind them, and sometimes they have to leave them to be at other places and and uh, the burden of leadership is hard on the families that they hold, Lord. So we pray blessings on them, Lord, and that you would make up the time and encourage them and their families, Lord, uh, in the service that they do for our city. Lord, again, we thank you. Thank you for our city. And Lord, bless our leadership in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 This evening, we are honored to have the BMAC Daniel Lego League, who is going to lead us in our invocation. Uh, not our invocation, our Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> oh, well, we just had the invocation. Jeff, I'm sorry. This, oh, is just, this is just not your night because of me, I guess. Anytime you're ready, ladies and gentlemen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, up there we'll go ahead and let you be first we have a presentation tonight by by the B. McDaniel Lego League and it's going to be led by Elena Kinghorn and Kimberly Blacker Black a Black a is that right Blackie A Blackie A okay Anytime you're ready. <laughs> Good evening. We have a little Einstein from B. McDaniel Middle School. Uh, <coughs> we are facing a global crisis. Land is being cleared and greenhouse gases are spreading rapidly. So we introduce you to the Biogen. Mm. What the Biogen does is phenomenal. The process is so simple. Just put any fruit or vegetable into the shredder I know you have a rotten bag of lettuce you're decomposing all Christmas Day dinner in your fridge. <laughs> Second, the pulp will be pumped into two digesters. The digesters will then be eat the food waste and release the biogas. The biogas will then travel through a pipe to the home where we may use natural gas. We power your very own kitchen. The biogen also uses composting materials to make fertilizer. This fertilizer can be used to grow even more food in your garden. That food will either be cooked or forgotten and turned into organic waste. The cycle continues. When we spoke to Kelvin Lee and Herschel Sheena from Texas Instruments, they said that every good invention falls in three main categories. The first is quality. The biogas is 0.32% more effective than natural gas. Next, size. The biogen will take up space wherever you put it, so the space is not wasted because fertilizer and saves you money. Lastly, cost. The biogen can save up to one-fourth of your natural gas bill. Our biogen also comes
comes in three sizes, small, medium, and large. <laughs> and can all fit in your backyard. We have proof that this invention works because we did an experiment where we put natural food waste into water bottles and attached balloons to them. As predicted, the balloons grew. After three days, all the balloons had at least some biogas in them. The, the balloon that had the most biogas, as predicted, were the moldy blueberries. So we can infer that moldy and or rotten food will produce the most biogas. This invention would be a big benefit to the energy industry. Thank, thank you for your time. Wow. If you didn't see what the, their shirts say, it says Little Einsteins. <laughs> I think that's, that's uh, pretty close to correct. So why don't we start over here and you tell us your name. Hi, my name is Cooper Smith. Everett Courtney. Blue Call. Dawson Gamage. Stephanie Gurr. Ellie Chapman. Celine Pinkerton. All right. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I thank you. right yes, here. We do. So, thank you. Sure. Sure. Our audience is going to be much smaller now that our little Einsteins are, have, have left the building. All right, that was great. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, we have a presentation to make tonight. The Texoma Health, Health Foundation 150 Mile Challenge Awards, Justin Eastwood. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to move the mic and address the crowd. Well, okay. As long as we can hear you. <laughs> okay. 2022 was Denison's 150th birthday, a time for celebrating our story, connecting with our neighbors, and showcasing what makes our city special. We are fortunate in Denison to have a highly engaged community of park and recreation enthusiasts. During our last council meeting, we were able to highlight the accomplishments of our aquatics participants as they reached their 150 challenge milestones. Sticking with the same theme, we have the privilege of acknowledging another special group recognized through the THF Park 150 Mile Challenge. These dedicated competitors were challenged to undertake 150 miles of walking, running, biking, or roller skating to commemorate the city of Des Denison's sesquicentennial <coughs> year. As a reminder, this challenge was put in place to symbolize the hard work, unwavering passion, and the thrill of progress that defined Denison in its founding in 1872. These principles, along with the high ideals of civic devotion and community spirit, combined to create a city unlike any other. Before we get started, I'd like to note a few interesting facts. First, there was substantial participation throughout the year. More than 50 participants submitted mileage. Of those 50 participants, there were close to 1,000 documented submissions. Although others were close, only eight noteworthy participants reached the goal of 150 miles. Six will be recognized tonight. The combined total distance from all participants was just over 3,324 miles. So to the recipients, tonight we would like to thank you all for participating in this important chapter of Denison's history and highlight your accomplishments by providing you with a commemorative plaque noting your achievements. At this time, I'd like to invite our Honorable Mayor to help me hand out these special awards. Our Mayor's opening sesquicentennial declaration best described these moments. 
when she encouraged everyone to celebrate significant milestones. She said, everyone is invited to celebrate our town, and we sincerely hope that many of you will create and start planning your own Denison 150 experiences as part of this year's sesquicentennial. So we had a few participants that were not able to make it tonight, but we'd still like to recognize them. Dr. Jeremy McMillan and Kathy Panetti. So shall we get started? Let's get started. Okay. Okay. Sherilyn Tidwell. Carol Kistner. Thank you. Uber Junior Galaviz. Darren Kistner. Denison's Carrie Borgens. Congratulations, Carrie. And Diana Solser. This is the team that put the program together. And our crowd gets smaller. <clears throat> This time in every meeting, we set aside time for any citizen who wishes to speak on any action item that is listed on the agenda. In order to speak, you must fill out a request to speak card prior to reaching this point in our agenda. Ms. Wallentine, do we have any request to speak cards? There being none, there will be no public comments. Uh, item four, consent agenda, we need to Remove item Q and consider it separately, and uh, Council Member Spiegel will need to uh, recuse himself. Uh, the consent agenda. Mayor, I move to approve items 4A through 4M. Um, Everything but 4Q, sorry. Yes. <laughs> Anything but 4Q. On the, on, on the consent agenda. Second. There is a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Crawley and a second by Council Member Hander. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Item 4Q. Let the record show that Council Member Spiegel has left the dais. Receive a report, hold a discussion, and take action on rejecting the proposal submitted by Oak Creek Builders LLC regarding. RFP number 2023-001, Downtown Denison, 321 West Main Street project. Are there any questions by council? A motion. Mayor, I move to reject the proposal submitted by Oak Creek Builders LLC regarding RFP number 2023-001, Downtown Denison, 321 West Main Street project. 
Second. There is a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Crawley and a second by Councilmember Thorne. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Uh, will you notify Councilmember Spiegel to return to the dais? Let the record reflect that at 615, Councilmember Spiegel returned to the dais. Item 5A, receive a report, hold a discussion, conduct a public hearing, and take action on an ordinance to rezone approximately 0.238 acres legally, legally described as situated in part of the Benjamin Moffitt Survey, abstract number 803, and being part of a 1.4034 acre tract of land, Grayson County, Texas, a GCAD property ID number 149586, also known as 1607 Bells Drive from the local retail district to SF 7.5 single family residential case number 2023-001Z. Miss York. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Mayor and Council. The first and only item I have for you tonight is a uh, request to rezone what's currently addressed as 1607 Bells Drive. Um, this is the aerial view of that property off of Bells and kind of at the corner of US 69. It's currently zoned uh, local retail and the applicant presented staff with a minor plat in the hopes of separating <clears throat> uh, the northern portion of the property and the southern portion of the property to accommodate a, an established single family uh, dwelling unit. When they presented the replat, because that, or I'm sorry, the minor plat, because the property is owned local retail, the northern lot did not conform to the local retail development standards. So the applicant is pursuing um, a rezone to single family 7.5 in order to move forward with the plat and then to also essentially zone that property for how it's been developed. Um, the lot does to conform to the SF uh, 7.5 development standards. Uh, planning and zoning recommended approval at their meeting um, on January 24th, and staff recommends approval. And I'm present for any questions, and so is the applicant. Questions for Ms. Short? This is a public hearing. Is there anyone here wishing to speak on behalf of this agenda item? There being none, the public hearing is closed. Discussion from council. A motion. Mayor, I move to approve changing the zoning from the subject property from local retail zoning district to SF-7.5 single family residential zoning district. Second. second. There is a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Crawley and a second by Council Member Courtright. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Pursuant to Chapter 551, Texas Government Code, the Council reserves the right to convene in executive sessions from time to time as deemed necessary during this meeting to receive legal advice from its attorney on any posted agenda item as permitted by law or to discuss the following. Consult with attorney on a matter in which the attorney's duty to the governmental body under the Texas Disciplinary Rules of Professional Conduct conflicts with this chapter and or consult with the attorney about pending or contemplated litigation or contemplated settlement of the same, section 551.071, confer with city attorney regarding use of city rights of, rights of way and easements, discuss the deployment or specific occasions for implementation of security personnel or devices, section 551.076, discuss police communication equipment. The time is six. 19 and the council is now in executive session.